Jai Om Vishnu Paramahamsa Parivaka Chai Shri Shri Madhya Svayan Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananda Kodi Vaishnava Vindhi Ki Jai Namachai Srila Hai Das Thakur Ki Jai Rema Goho Shri Krishna Taitanya Pramunishananda Shri Advaita Gauradhar Shri Vasiri Gaur Bhakti Vindhi Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopi Nasham Kunda Radha Kunda Gita Govadhani Ki Jai Vandava Dhamma Ki Jai Navadvita Dhamma Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Talasi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vindhi Ki Jai Go Premanandi Hari Ho All Glory Simba Devotees All Glory Simba Devotees All Glory Simba Devotees all glory to Shri Shri Guru and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So a reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 1, Text 22. Purai Vapumsa Vrihrito Darajvaro Bavat see Bavat Bir Amshire Yadusu Pajanyatam Sayavat Urjva Baram Ishvareshvara. Swakala Shakya Shapayams Charid Bhuvi Somebody could chant.
Mātijis. Word for word, Pura, even before this, Eva, indeed, Pumsa, by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Avadritaha, was certainly known, Dara Jvaraha, the distress on the earth. Baba, see, Baba Bihi, by your good selves. Amshire, expanding as plenary portions. Yadushu, in the family of King Yadu. Upajanyatam, take your birth and appear there. Saha, He, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yabat, as long as. Urdvaha, of the earth. Baram, the burden. Ishvara, Ishvaraha, the Lord of Lords. Swakala, Shakshad, by his own potency, the time factor. Shapayam, diminishing. Chayet, should move. Bhuvi, on the surface of the earth. Translate, translation. Lord Brahma informed the demigods, before we submitted our p petition to the Lord, he was already aware of the distress on earth. Consequently, for as long as the Lord moves on earth to diminish its burden by his own potency in the form of time, all of you demigods should appear through plenary portions as sons and grandsons in the family of the Yadus, purport. As stated in the Brahma Samhita, 539, Ramadi Murdeshu Kala Niyamena Twistan Nana Vataram Akarot Bhuvaneshu Kintu Krishna Swayam Samaba Samabavat Parama Pumanyo Govindam Hari Purusham Tamaham Majami. I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead Govinda, who is always situated in various incarnations such as Rama, Nursingha, and many. Uh, sub-incarnations as well, but who is the original personality of Godhead known as Krishna and who incarnates personally also. 
In this verse from Shema Bhagavatam, we find the words Purava uh, Pum Sa Vrit uh, Vavrito Dara Jvara. The word Pumsa refers to Krishna, who, has already, who was already aware of how the whole world was suffering because of the increase of demons. Without reference to the supreme power of the personality of Godhead, demons assert themselves to be independent kings and presidents, and thus they create a disturbance by increasing their military power. When such disturbances are very prominent, Krishna appears. At present also, various demoniac states all over the world are increasing their military power in many ways, and the whole situation has become distressful. Therefore, Krishna has appeared by his name in the Hare Krishna movement, which will certainly diminish the burden of the world. Philosophers, religionists, and people in general must take to this movement very seriously, for man-made plans and devices will not help bring, bring peace on earth. The transcendental sound, Hare Krishna, is not different from the person Krishna. Nama Chintamani Krishnas Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shrudo Nitya Mukto Bina Binatwam Nama Namino. That's from the Padma Purana. There is no difference between the sound Hari Krishna and Krishna the person. Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Bastaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Vaskacha Deshatarani. So uh, here in the purport it mentions that Krishna is uh, the supreme personality of God and from him come various incarnations. Uh, this is also mentioned uh, in the Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says in the seventh chapter that uh, there is no truth superior to me. Um, everything, uh, there is no truth superior to me. Uh, all, all, uh, everything emanates from me or everything is strong on me like pearls are strung on a thread. So all these incarnations, they come from Krishna and as also stated in the Brahma Samhita, uh, Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. And he is like the original candle. And he lights, like just like you get a candle and you light one candle, and then that candle lights another candle. So similarly, uh, so similarly, Krishna lights, uh, uh, he expands himself into various forms. And these, all these different forms of the personality of God, or all these Vishnu Tattva forms, uh, they are, uh, they all have the same potency. They all have the same potency as the personality of God. And the difference is uh, with Krishna that he's the original. And uh, so, uh, so this is the nature of the absolute. Uh, even though it expands, uh, it is the same. Uh, but ourselves, uh, we may expand ourselves in various ways, just like if we have a photograph of ourselves or we're in, uh, we're in front of a, a, few, a couple mirrors, then uh, there's reflection is there. Uh, but this reflection is not good as the actual person because this is in the world of duality. But in the absolute realm, uh, Krishna... Uh, all the different forms are, have the same potency and also all his different features, his, his name, his quality, his pastimes, uh, also have the same potency. Uh, so by chanting Hare Krishna, uh, we get the same benefit as being personally in front of Krishna. So all these things are absolute. Just like the deity form, uh, there is no difference between Krishna and his deity form. 
So if you approach the deity, if you serve the deity, then that is directly serving Krishna. There is no difference. Although some people may see it differently, but we can understand that there is actually no difference. And, and even within the, within the history, uh, just like in Shashi Gopal, uh, the devotee, uh, his devotee would talk to him and the deity would talk back, uh, converse with him, converse with his devotee, and he would also walk. Uh, he wanted him to become a witness, so he asked the deity to come with him, and so the deity would walk behind his devotee like that. So in this way, all the potencies are in uh, Krishna and his different uh, attributes. So, uh, so we should take advantage of this, uh, chanting the holy name of the Lord, and... Uh, in the process is we simply should hear and chant. Uh, uh, Prabhupada wrote this uh, one letter to Pladananda. He said that you should simply, you know, hear and chant Hare Krishna. But if uh, one, if, if while chanting, uh, the pastimes come to you, uh, then that's very good. But this shouldn't be done artificially. It should come automatically. So sometimes uh, those in the neophyte stage, they try to uh, imitate uh, ad advanced devotees, but we should not imitate. We have to follow. So our spiritual master told us that we should simply hear each syllable. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And this way, we'll make benefit. And gradually, as we become purified, purify in heart, uh, then so many other realizations will come. So uh, this chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, uh, we have to do this. And we have to do it without committing offenses. So it has to be done purely. Then we get the full effect. Uh, so the, uh, one of the important aspects of chanting Hare Krishna is as Sheila Prabha mentions, uh, it's either in the Nectar of Instruction or I think in the, or the Chaitanya Charitamrita that uh, of all the instructions of the spiritual master, his most important instruction is to chant 16 rounds a day. Uh, so we may have so many duties to perform, uh, but we always must uh, attend to this duty. This is the most essential. And sometimes we may find that uh, we're very busy in our devotional service and we may not have time to chant 60 rounds. And Prabhupada said uh, that if, and this was in a morning walk conversation, that uh, if you don't have time to, because of busyness to chant 60 rounds a day, then the next day you, make it, you must make it up. Uh, and you can't eat or sleep until you finish your rounds like that. And he also uh, mentioned uh, in an another conversation that if you don't, if you chant only, like, let's say, he gave an example. If you chant only 12 rounds one day, uh, then the next day you must chant 20 rounds. Not that, in other words, not that one day I, I couldn't chant that much and then I try to catch up and it takes me so many days to catch up. No, you just, you can't chant 16 rounds that day because it's a business and the next day you have to chant your regular rounds plus all your makeup rounds like that. So by doing that, uh, then we'll advance in spiritual life. So, and spiritual life means uh, to reduce uh, the material propensities. In, in this, uh, the material propensities are eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, mentions that uh, one should sleep very little because time is very short, and we have to engage our time in Krishna consciousness. Uh, he mentioned how the six Goswamis, they, they slept only uh, two hours a night, and sometimes they even forgot to do that. And, uh, and Prabhupada talked about his, 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 the way he would sleep. He, said he also slept very little in a conversation. He was mentioning he sleeps he would sleep two hours during the night and two hours during the day. And so he would also s uh, sleep very little. 
And uh, to also to sleep very little, we have to be careful to uh, eat very little like that. Is it because you eat too much, then you have to sleep too much. So we have to uh, be careful in this way. So uh, spiritual life means uh, to engage in Krishna's service. Uh, it means that uh, by satisfying Krishna, then we're automatically become satisfied. Just like the finger, if, it, if you give a, a, a rascula to the finger, then if it tries to eat it by itself, then it will become frustrated. Uh, so, uh, but it has to give it to the, the mouth, and then the mouth brings it to the stomach, and this way uh, the finger becomes uh, reddish, the whole body becomes energized, and so Srila Prabhupada also mentions for us, uh, we can't become energized simply by eating ordinary food. We have to become energized by eating Krishna Vashan. In this way, uh, we become energized. So this is a system we can't enjoy independently. Uh, we can't uh, enjoy the resources of material nature. This is artificial. We have to give everything to Krishna, and then we'll become happy. Uh, Srila Prabhupada mentions, uh, gives an example of a man who has many wives. So the business of the, the wife is to uh, satisfy her husband. Uh, but if she thinks uh, that she could predominate over the other wives or to enjoy the other wives, then this will simply cause uh, frustration and is simply illusionary. It doesn't, it, it's not possible. Uh, if the wives uh, satisfy the husband, then they'll be happy. So similarly, uh, there's different types of akritis in this material world, energies of Krishna. Uh, there's the inferior nature and the superior nature. So we are the, in, the superior nature, and the inferior nature uh, is described in the Bhagavad Gita, seventh chapter, uh, I think it's text number four. Earth, water, fire, air, Earth, water, fire, earth, ether, mind, intelligence, and the false ego, all together, these eight comprise my separated material energies. So these separated material energies, the inferior nature, uh, has to also be engaged in Krishna's service. Uh, we cannot enjoy uh, the, uh, the, the inferior prakriti. This is not possible. It has to be uh, given to Krishna, and then we could actually become happy. So, uh, so we are servants. Uh, that's our position. And no matter where we go, uh, we have to serve. Uh, just like if uh, probably gave an example of a typewriter, uh, the typewriter, its business is simply to type, whether it's in heaven or in hell. Uh, so our position is we have to serve Krishna uh, in all circumstances, uh, otherwise, if we don't serve Krishna, uh, we have to serve Maya. I have to serve my family. I have to serve my country. I have to serve so many things. But these material things will never give us satisfaction. Uh, they, and they'll never be satisfied either. Uh, they will not give us a pension. Uh, if we want to give them up, they say no. Well, uh, there's so many things that need to be done, you cannot leave. They will never give us relief from our situation. Uh, so we have to simply serve Krishna and uh, be properly situated. So uh, service, of course, to serve Krishna, uh, we just have to be sincere. Uh, because we are limited and Krishna is unlimited. So it's not possible to serve Krishna perfectly. But if we simply try our best, if we are sincere in serving him, uh, then we, he will see that. Uh, just like a child, uh, what could he give his father? He, his father is giving him everything. But if the child gives the father uh, some present, that is paid for by the father, or some little candy or something like that, then the father is very much pleased. So actually, we cannot offer Krishna anything. He is giving us everything. He owns everything. 
but he is very pleased if we sincerely try to serve him. So spiritual life uh, service, spiritual service is, uh, we could test whether we're spiritually serving if we become enthusiastic when we serve, we become enthused. In the material world, when there's activity or when they, when they work very hard, uh, they simply become very tired. But in spiritual life, uh, the more you work, the more enthused you become. So probably gave the example, uh, if, if in the morning, uh, if you are not enthused uh, to come to Mongol Artik, uh, if you don't, if you, if you're, if you're lazy, uh, then uh, you're not serving uh, spiritually, you're serving materially. So this is very important that we engage in service and we do it enthusiastically. Uh, and this is the symptom of spiritual service. So we, we desire so many things in this material world. Uh, we're persisting, like a child is persisting. He wants this, I want that. Uh, so Krishna is sanctioning uh, these material things, uh, but he's very reluctant to do so. He doesn't want us to try to enjoy this material world. He says, Sarvadama Parikyaja. He says, give up all this rascaldom uh, that I want this body, I want that body, I want to enjoy life in this way. Give up all this nonsense. Uh, just surrender unto me. And if we do that, uh, then we'll become happy. Uh, so we have to change, we have to desire, we, we have to want only Krishna. And then uh, we'll get Krishna, we'll be free from the influence of uh, the material energy. But if we want to, uh, if, we, if, we don't, if we're not like that, if, uh, if we want something else, then uh, Maya will offer us so many things. So uh, our desire is in our hands. Uh, we could either use it to serve Krishna or to serve the, uh, the material energy. So if we desire, we could get free from birth, death, disease, and old age. Uh, and, and, or if we want to uh, enjoy this material world, then we could accept one material body after another and suffer and suffer and suffer. So in this mature world, uh, there is no happiness here. There's no really happiness. Uh, simply compared to chewing the chewed. Uh, there's no taste uh, in this mature world. Taste is in the spiritual world. Rasa, it's taste, just like Prabhupada said, taste like uh, the taste of mango juice or orange juice. It's very tasteful. Uh, but in the mature world, anything we, we try to taste, it becomes hackneyed. Uh, it becomes, it's very temporary. After a few uh, bites, it becomes, it loses its flavor. It's no more tasteful. Uh, so the materialists, they're trying to enjoy the material world. Uh, they're trying to enjoy at home life. Because uh, in, in material life, uh, a sense enjoyment means sex life. So in this way, they're, they're enjoying sex life at home, uh, but they're not satisfied. They have to go to the, a theater or the naked dance, uh, s but they're never satisfied because material life is, is temporary. And it, if you do, any of, any, even if, and if, you, if you accept it, uh, then you, there's full, you're always full of anxiety that, uh, Oh, my, my lover may go away. Uh, she may cheat me. You're always full of anxiety. So this is the illusion of the material world. Uh, this body is simply illusion. Uh, it has no really, there's no really pleasure there. Uh, just like you, we may see a mannequin in the window, very beautiful mannequin, but nobody is attracted to it because we know it's simply imitation. And similarly, this, this body is simply a covering of the soul. It's simply imitation. It has no value. Uh, and therefore, when the body dies, 
uh, nobody is attracted to that body uh, because uh, the soul is gone. So the essence of love is not this body. The essence is the, the soul within the body. That's the essence of love, not this, not this material thing, but the spiritual thing. So, uh, so in the, in the purport, it talks about how the demons are trying to uh, increase their military strength and how the Krishna conscious movement has appeared as the holy name in this age. And the, the demons, they want to, uh, they're simply, you know, fighting among themselves because they won't accept Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And when, and when you know when except Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then uh, there simply will be uh, war. Uh, Krishna says that he's a benefactor. In the, in the fifth chap chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I'm the benefactor of all sacrifices and austerities uh, and the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods and the benefactor and well-wisher well of all living entities. Uh, and one who knows this attains peace from the pains of material miseries. So because they do not know this, uh, they are suffering and fighting among themselves. And because of and sinful activities, uh, because of unwanted population, uh, Varnashankara, they are simply uh, fighting among themselves. Nobody knows what they are whether they're Brahmana, Shatya, Vaishya, Sudra. Actually, they are less than that. But uh, because of their, their lower qualities, uh, they are uh, fighting among themselves. So uh, they, they're very strong. The, the, the demons, they're very strong, just like tigers. Uh, just like Prabhu was saying, in, in Moscow, they, or in Russia, they are simply uh, there's hardly any vegetables as they they're eating so much meat uh, so they are like a strong like tigers uh, but uh, what is a tiger good for you know they are simply shot so the material nature uh, is simply shooting them uh, like in the western countries there's so many revolutions so many wars and so material nature is simply shooting them. So what's, what's the good of their so-called strength? Um, so, uh, and so by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, we could uh, rectify the situation in this material world. And uh, also sometimes devotees, uh, well, devotees take up the activities of Krishna and like Krishna says, that I come to protect the pious and to and, and destroy the miscreants. So also the devotees also take up this position, uh, just like Prabhupada said that uh, the the two great wars were fought by uh, Vishnu and the Vaishnavas, uh, Ravana, uh, uh, Lord, Lord Ramachandra fought against Ravana and himself and Hanuman, so the, the uh, Vishnu and, and the Vaishnava. And then the other big war was the Kurukshetra fought by Krishna and Arjun. So a devotee, uh, if necessary, uh, he will also kill the demons. It's not that the devotees are coward. Uh, Prabhupada mentions how uh, you, in due course of time you will see the power of this Krishna consciousness movement. So in this way, uh, Krishna consciousness is not simply one-sided, it's all-sided. It will touch on everything, uh, politics, sociology, and this way, uh, what is ever necessary, uh, a devotee will do. It's not that a war is a bad thing. Uh, nothing is bad if it's utilized for Krishna. And nothing is good if it's utilized for own sense gratification. So that's the criterion of a devotee. So, uh, so a devotee is 
is intelligent. He's very intelligent, and he can understand how to do things properly. So how to do all these activities, how to carry out this mission of Srila Prabhupada, uh, this requires a good brain. And uh, this, in this way, Prabhupada is training uh, his disciples to become brahmanas, how to become intelligent, not simply become very strong and big. Uh, like Srila Prabhupada gave the example of the rabbit and the lion. Uh, the lion was uh, attacking all, so many of the animals, and they were being killed. And so they made uh, a truce with the lion that uh, just, you know, leave us alone and we'll send you somebody every day. So in this way, uh, it, was a time, this one, it was a time for the one rabbit to go to the lion to be eaten. And he was thinking of what to do. So he was late in coming to the lion. And when he came... He, uh, the lion was very angry. Why are you late? And he said, well, you see, I met this other lion, and uh, I told him that, you know, I'm not meant for you. I'm meant for this other lion to eat. And in this way, I came, you know, and that's why I'm late. And he was very angry. Where is this other lion? And the rabbit uh, took the lion to one well, and he said, look, look inside here. And the lion looked, and he, and he made a big roar, and there was a roar back, and he saw, he looked down, and he saw his reflection, and he jumped in the well, and this way he was killed. So uh, intelligence doesn't mean power, or, intelli in, in, or rather, intelligence means power, not simply physical strength. So in this way, if we, the, if the brahmanas, if the uh, brahmana Vaishnavas and Krishna consciousness, if they, if they advise, because the position of a brahmana is he, av he advises the heads of state. Uh, so by the, by the heads of state taking up the good instructions of the brahmana Vaishnavas, then they could rule this planet very nicely. So this takes training. Uh, That's why I probably mentioned the Varnashram College. He wanted us to establish a Varnashram College to train all the different varnas and ashrams. And the, although this seems very uh, difficult to do, like to ex accept all these things, even Prabhu, when he first came here, uh, he was thinking how long he'll stay, and he was thinking, well, I, I have this, I'm staying with someone, so one month and maybe two months, so he got a two-month visa. Uh, but he was thinking when he presents his program to, these pe to the Western people, they will say, Please go away. Uh, so, probably this was my impression. Uh, but he was thinking, uh, let me simply try. So in this way, we have to simply try to carry the, this out and leave the results up to Krishna. So we could stop there. Are there any questions on any of these points? Yes, Archita? Yeah, that rabbit story is such good instruction. The real statement in Sanskrit is buddhiryasya balam tasya near buddhis nakatobalam. Intelligence is strength. One who has no intelligence has no strength. Thank you. Any other questions on these points? Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Shishi, Guru, and Goranga.